Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. How to make a complex form into really simple step. Today is another video to make this antique inspired ring with the X design element on the top. And I also wanted to show you how to hollow out from the back to reduce the weight for metal casting. Are you ready for another jewelry care tutorial? Let's get started. We're going to start from scratch that's starting a circle for whatever size for your ring size. I'm going to use the radius for eight for this demonstration. And then we can decide what type of a ring shank we like and kind of coming into the right view. I want to make something really nice and puffy, but I want to starting with something at least give me a guideline for how thick this is going to be. Uh, I'd like to have this ring is pretty wide. So on the top, roughly seven ish millimeter. And then I'm going to move this back to this. All right. This is just for my reference. So I'm going to draw an arc and I'm going to snap in here, here and up. Then I'm going to mirror this guy from the midpoint coming over here and draw another arc going from this point to this point and up. And this is where you're going to have a stone setting. If you feel like that's not enough, you might want to calculate how big you want it. The stone setting is not going to be um, discussed here because I've been discussing many of my other videos. There's no need to repeat it. You can go ahead to check on those um, video there. And then the second things I wanted to do is the button. I want them to feel like more of the comfort fit. So I'm going to create something like this there. All right, then I can delete this one. This is my profile there. And I'm going to using the blend tool. I'm going to blend from here to here and decide how puffy you like to have it and click OK. So that will be one side of a profile. Then I'm going to simply just mirror, just make sure it is symmetrical. And then I'm going to join it. So this will be the profile. Now you can keep editing if you want to. For example, you feel like this might need to be wider. You know, you can keep changing if you want to. But I'm going to stay with this. However, I do not like the sharp point there. So I'm going to use fitted curve. And I want to try something like 0.5 millimeter and see if that is too big. If it is too big, um, you may want to try 0.35 and see what look nice to you. Okay, so that will be the profile. Now this profile on the top is going to sweep to the bottom, but on the bottom, I actually want them to be flat. I don't want the bottom to be bumpy. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool. You have the one called conic corner and you snapping anywhere, decided how big the bottom is going to be and moving your mouse in. So you can get this pillow shape. I'm going to move from this quadrant into this quadrant. Double check if this is too thick for you. From here to here is already four millimeter. It's kind of really dummy. And if that is your, is your design, that's fine. All right, so we are going to use the command for sweep one rail. This is a rail. This is the cross section. Make sure all of, all of the arrow is aligned and facing the same direction. Hit enter and we need to close the sweep. So you will get something like this. Click OK, then we will have our ring. The second thing we wanted to do is creating the cross structure. So I'm going to use this midpoint, snapping into the midpoint there, coming over, deciding how wide you wanted to have. This is just for our reference. Then I'm going to be creating the arc, snapping it to the end point here and end point here and moving up for how tall you want this one to be. Now we need to do more editing. So let's go ahead to rebuild into seven point and make sure the degree is three. All right. So once we have this curve, we want to go ahead to rotate it into any angle that you feel it need to be. And then we want to 1D scale it up on our right view. So now we have this cross there. You can keep editing if you want to. For example, you feel like this need to be wider. And also on the top view, I do want it to feel like a little bit uh, S shape. So I'm going to move in this point, but I need to have them symmetrical. So I want to go with the gumball and say I want to move 
minus one millimeter. And this one, I can use the gumball to move one millimeter there. So now I have this shape is going to be my S shape. Double check at the front view. Now this guy is stopping right here in the middle. We need to have this point going all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to grab the very last two point and then just move it down and make sure it is past your ring shank. So let me mark this in the red color. It's easier for you to see. So now this is our curve for us to do the sweep. All right, to sweep them, I'm going to making the profile. Let's go ahead to make two circle there. Um, making one first, and then I'm going to making a copy, pick on both of them, and I'm going to use the trim command. After that, make sure you join it. Now, once it's joined, we want to give it a fitted corner. So let me give them a fitted corners for 0.1 millimeter, something really small. You don't need to have a big one there. So now we want to move this back to the center a little bit like that. Okay, so that will be the first one. We need this one rotated to the other side. So that's using the rotate command. Copy equal no, center is zero, and just rotate it 180 degree. All right, so if you do something like this, then your sweep will be exactly the same size. And I do want to have a middle one that's a little bit fatter. So what I'm going to do is going to copy one to the middle and rotate it something like this. Move it back on my top view right there and make them a little bit fatter and i would like to rotate it in the angle like this toward to where my uh rail is going to be and try to take a look and make sure they are right in the center if you are not so sure if they are right in the center you can use the align centers tool and just type it zero okay so now this is in the right place let's take a look on our sweep we are going to use the sweep one command and we're going to pick up this rail cross section, cross section, and this cross section there. All right. Make sure all the arrow is aligned in the same place. And arrow is facing the same direction. Okay. So now we have this, make sure you record a history and let's hit enter. Right, click OK and see if you like it. Looking at the top view, if you feel like this need to be a little bit bigger so we can actually scale it 1D to make them fatter. And those two scale it down a little bit so they become like this. So it's really up to you how you like to tweak it. I'm going to use a mirror command, snapping into the zero and making something like this. So now they are the same high. And the first one, we still have a record history. So I'm going to move this one up a little bit. So it's looking like one that's on top of the other one. And if that is overall too tall for you, let's go ahead to move it down. So that's not too high over there. As long as we can see the pattern, we don't need them to stand out so much. So I'm going to adjust them to make them look something like this. Okay, so now we got everything. Let's go ahead to cap this two and bowling union together. And now we're gonna come back to our ring and coming into the solid, you have extruded planar curve straight and we can use the bowling difference for this pattern out of this ring. So this ring size once it's cut off and it won't be inside of the ring. You may want to fit it a little bit, just make sure that it's not sticking out too much. Or if you really don't like it, you want them to tuck in more and you're already bowling. Uh, one thing that you can do is use a cage edit. And then for example, you want to choose a bounding box, align to the wall and X, Y, Z is preset as four. Uh, on the Z here, I'm going to change to eight and hit enter. I have a lot more discussion in my course for this. If you're really interesting for all the detail, step-by-step -step learning right now, you are more than welcome to check out my class. 
and then we can bring in like this so it feel like it's tucking a little bit more you might need to cutting your ring uh, again if it is stick it out too much from the inside of the ring so you can keep tweaking if you want to to bring them in like this okay so now i'm going to stop tweaking uh, let's talk about how to hollow this one out so I'm going to pick up all the curve that we have here and I'm going to uh, create a new uh, layer and bring that into the new layer. So let's change the object layer and let's turn this off. And this is all we have. Now what we like to do is create inside to be hollow by using those two profile. So first I'm going to moving this profile down by making a copy and make them smaller. And this is how much of a thickness that you're going to have over there in between this one and that one. Uh, you can want these scale a little bit more. You can make them a little bit taller if you feel like something like that will work well for you. Uh, watch out the thickness though. You don't want to make it too thin. You may have a casting issue. All right, so I'm going to turn this one into the cyan color so you know which one we are working on. And the second one I'm going to do simply just make this a copy over there and to inside of the ring and make them a little bit smaller. And again, turn this into the cyan color. All right, so let me show you what happened if we use a sweep one rail and we sweep this one and this one and let's hit enter, make sure they all align perfectly and then we want to close the sweep we click ok so this is a ring that we just create now let me turn it on back to what we had there so look this ring is inside of that ring and if we are going to use a bowling difference this one out of this one then we will see it is cutting inside and again if you don't like this uh hard shape there we're gonna go back one step there we might want to adjust this one instead of having it so much bump there i'm going to did it this one and did it those so that way i don't have the hard sh um, corner there you might want to move in those one down and i kind of creating two corner there maybe you want to rebuild this guy to be similar but a smoother curve then we want to do the sweep one rail and you go here and here make sure you align perfectly and then let's hit enter close sweep and then we got something better like this now let's turn on what we had there let me show you again the differences by turning into the cyan color so you can see now it is intersect let's take a look bowling difference this one out of this one and then it's much better so you don't have a lot of a zigzag over there all right you can keep adjusting um, to the right thickness for your ring i've demo a lot of these editing in my other videos so i'm not going to repeat it here but if you're interested about the stone setting and you are a beginner i have a perfect free mini stone setting course for you it's completely free and I would like to share with you about the basic terminology, how the stone is set, show you how to create a prom set and turn it into your own custom design. Check out the link in the description below. Hope to see you there. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.